is burnout even a problem in the structural engineering industry? I think it is. According to some SE3 surveys where they surveyed thousands of structural engineers throughout the US, the top two reasons to consider leaving the structural engineering industry is to achieve less stress and to achieve a better work-life balance. They also showed that close to half of the engineers surveyed were either neutral, dissatisfied, or very dissatisfied with their work-life balance. So today, I'm going to be going over the six reasons why I think structural engineers burn out. For each of these reasons, we'll go through how work contributes to it and how you, yourself, can contribute to your own burnout in each of these factors. I'll also be sprinkling in my own personal experiences as I see fit. And a disclaimer, I'm not a licensed psychiatrist or therapist in any way. I basically watched an hour long video about burnout by a Harvard trained psychiatrist talking about it. I'll link that video in the description below and his points resonated with me. So I'm basically just going to give you a summary of that along with my own personal perspectives. Let's jump into it. First, a basic definition or symptoms of burnout. You can tell you're burned out when you stop caring, when you lack empathy about your work and about others around you in your work. You'll have low energy and you'll basically be unfulfilled at your job. You'll be very cynical and you'll have a negative outlook on a lot of things. Now let's jump into the six factors that contribute to structural engineers burning out. We have workload, control, values, reward, community, and fairness. The first one is workload. In the workplace, this is pretty easy to spot. You may have an abusive boss that always makes you work overtime and basically just making you work, 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 and never letting up. And if they're making you work that much, I just don't think it's sustainable in the long term. Sure, you can get a few good years out of engineers by working them 80 plus hours a week, but they're not gonna last. So that's how workplace can contribute to overworking. But what about you? Especially if you're an ambitious person or you want to please others. If you're driven and ambitious, you'll take on more and more work. You'll volunteer for new projects. You'll take on more than you can handle because you want to achieve. Or if you're that type of person to be a lot more passive and just want to please others, you'll often be saying yes to a lot of extra work or deadlines that you probably should push back on. You don't know how to say no. And throughout my career, I've personally struggled with these. I tend to be, be over ambitious, try to take on more projects, and I have trouble saying no. To the point where I've read books on how to say no in the best possible way. And also learning to restrain myself when I know I already have a full plate, but a new project comes along that looks Pretty cool, but I know I wouldn't have the capacity to handle that. And that's burned me in the past too, where I would work on a project, other project comes along, yes, I'll work on that too. And what ends up happening is one or both of those projects get my mediocre effort and attention because I'm just too spread out. If you're not aware of this in yourself, you could go to another job because you think your work is overworking you. But once you go into your next position at your other company, you're gonna do the same thing intrinsically. You're gonna bring your own burnout problems with you because you weren't able to identify it within yourself on how to handle this. The second factor is control. How does this look like in the workplace? It's pretty easy to see in the workplace when you have a micromanager boss that won't let you do anything. They need everything their way. They're looking over your shoulder all the time and they don't trust you with the work or to even do it your own way. You could also have a boss in the complete opposite spectrum where they don't know what they're doing. They barely provide you with any direction or go into details about anything or when deadlines are. So hopefully you have someone that's in between those. So how do you contribute to this or make this worse? Well, you yourself may be a control freak. And if you're working under a micromanager, you're gonna go insane. Or in the opposite spectrum, you may be someone that needs a lot of handholding. Maybe you're not too sure and need a lot of guidance. So if you work with one of those managers that doesn't give you great direction, you're gonna feel lost and you're gonna feel like you're left drowning out in the sea. Sink or swim mentality. Uh, for me, I figured this out early on in through my internships. I've worked in places where they were very strict with procedures and doing everything to the 
exact system, systemized way that they were doing things, clocking in and out at the exact same time. And I could probably live with that, but for me, I really liked it when they would give me more freedom with my schedules and the way I did things. Maybe I found some other more effective way to do it or do some type of calculation or procedure and my managers would just let me run with it because it was working. For me, that's what I knew I tend to thrive in. So you should find out for yourself. I tended to like private companies more because I tended to have more freedom. So the smaller they were, the more freedom that you would get. I got the impression that bigger companies are a lot more systems that were a lot more strict also with government jobs too. That's one of the reasons why I've stayed in the private industry for so long because I enjoy it. And number three is values. People want to be challenged. They want to enjoy what they do and they want to be valued. Once you have all those things, I think that's when you'll find fulfillment in your work. A common thing that I see in almost all the engineering industries out there is the company, obviously it's a company, it's a business, they're going to value money and making profits, which yes, of course, they're a business and they gotta support all the employees. But then you have the employees, the engineers that went to school for four plus years to design new buildings and work on cool projects and learn new things. That's what they value when they, you know, when they went to school, that's why they wanted to become structural engineers. So right off the bat, you'll have two competing values and one value gets put priority over the other. There could be some conflict. One example of that is maybe there's a structural engineering firm and all they work on are specialty structures. Maybe all they do is residential work and they're doing the same type of house day in, day out because it's profitable. Then you have a new engineer that comes in and that new engineer is getting bored because that's all they do. They want to take on a new project, but if that company goes into another building type, for example, they're gonna lose money because they've never done that before. It's gonna take some time to learn that. And it's not the most profitable route for that company. So the engineer may get burnt out because they're not learning anything new and get bored. And for me, I knew this when I was getting into grad school on why I wanted to be a structural engineer. I wanted to be constantly learning and designing new buildings and learning new things and working with different types of materials. And I found a company where I could do that. I was challenged, I was valued, and I liked the work that I do. So if you don't know why you wanna become a structural engineer in the first place, I think that's very important because what you value should match up ideally with what the company values. And what I found throughout my career is that I really love learning and when I stop learning, that's when I get burnt out. And that's why I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online interactive STEM learning platform that helps you gain a deeper understanding of concepts in math, science, and computer science by taking you through the subjects in a visually stimulating hands-on way. So you can always be learning something new at your own pace and on the go. For example, in their scientific thinking course, you can learn about structures and bridge beams in a fun, practical, and interactive way. You're given an unstable bridge and you're supposed to make that bridge stable with as few beams as possible. If you fail, your bridge collapses and you start again. It also provides simple explanations of this one step at a time. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash Matt Picardle or click on the link in the descriptions below. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Fourth one is reward, or I'm just gonna say salary. How much you get paid. In the workplace, it's fairly easy to spot. It's how much they pay you, how much Overtime do they make you do? Are you hourly? Are you salaried? Across almost all industries, a lot of the employees say they're not getting paid enough. And your workplace, yeah, they just may not be paying you enough. They may be paying you unfair wages. They may be paying below the market rate. So that's definitely a cause for concern. And that could definitely be your workplace's fault. And my personal opinion about the structural engineering industry, of course, I think we're not getting paid enough for all the schooling that we go through, for all the work that we go through, for all the licensings and exams that we go through, and all the responsibility and risk that we take by designing buildings, yeah, we're not paid enough, but it's our own fault as an industry, and it's up to us to fix it. But that's a topic that deserves its own video, 
So let's talk about how about you? Do you think you're getting paid enough? What is that magic number that if you were to be paid that you would be happy? 80,000? 100,000? 150,000? 200K? 300K? A million? And look, that number is very unique and personal to each and every person and their circumstances. Uh, for me, I'm happy to live and get paid with the amount of money so I can live my lifestyle. And by no means am I frugal. I get coffee, uh, Starbucks every day. I eat out a lot, so I'm by no means cheap. But I also don't go around buying $100,000 cars. I live a comfortable, privileged life. And I'm very lucky to be paid that amount where I enjoy the work that I'm doing. But if you have personal circumstances or maybe you have five kids that you have to take care of, maybe the job, the position, the salary just really isn't enough to even live by, to support your family with. And I also find when talking to particularly younger engineers or even students, if you ask them why they should be paid more, it's often comparative. Well, my software engineering friend is making this amount of money and I just want to make as much as him. Or maybe you're in a parent-sibling situation where your siblings are making more than you and your parents think that you should be making more or equivalent to that. And it's not even about how much money you're making, it's about how much money you're making compared to someone else. And if you're in that trap, if you go to another firm, you're gonna be in the same position because someone is always going to be making more money than you. And number five is community. I tend to define this as your coworkers and also the workplace culture. Do you have a sense of community with the people that you work with? Do you enjoy working with them? If not at work, what about professional organizations? Becoming part of a group with like-minded individuals can do wonders for your morale and mental health. Does your company offer these types of organizations uh, within itself? Maybe a diversity and inclusion group, a women's leaders group, things like that where you can have a support system. But what about you? How can you sabotage this? Maybe you think you're the shy type and you don't like to talk to a lot of people. So even though if the company offers these events, these networking opportunities, or these opportunities to join, you're too shy and you don't want to meet new people so you don't get that sense of camaraderie because you'd rather be comfortable than uncomfortable and for me early on in my career i was like that i didn't join too many organizations or even try to avoid going to some events because i didn't know people but by going through more and more events joining professional organizations like asce joining younger members groups Things like that, I've learned the value of networking, not only outside of your company, but within your company as well. And the last one, number six, is fairness, or the perception of fairness. Now, there may be some instances where your workplace, maybe they just are unfair. Maybe they do treat equal employees completely differently. Maybe there's a pay gap between men and women employees. If that's the case, then yeah, that's definitely a workplace problem and that's on them to fix it. But you should also be aware if your perception of the fairness is correct, especially if you're complaining about it at work. Maybe you're the complainer type that complains a lot without trying to understand the full picture. Maybe you're complaining about Bob, the manager, because they get paid more and all they do is they're just on the phone the whole time while you're doing all the engineering work. Uh, what you don't know might be that Bob is doing business development. That project that you're working on, Bob brought in. Bob brought in a huge project so all of the engineers and employees can work. To a company, I would argue that that is a lot more valuable than an engineer maybe working on a spreadsheet because you can hire a new graduate engineer to do those spreadsheets, but it's going to be harder to find someone that can bring in a million dollar project. On the other side of that spectrum, instead of being a complainer, you can be a complete doormat and just let everybody <laughs> treat you unequally. And they do that because you don't stand up for yourself or you don't set boundaries. So please take all these into consideration and do some self-reflection yourself. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.